Good morning, guys. Uh, it is a rainy and kind of chilly Wednesday morning, and I was not planning on making a video. I am sitting in a parking lot outside of Starbucks with somebody doing some hedge trimming outside, and if it's too loud, I apologize. But there was a story in Publishers Weekly yesterday, and <laughs> you guys know I have my traditional publishing series and every video I feel like is just doom and gloom and super negative and this one actually dare I say gave me a little bit of hope <laughs> so I wanted to just go over it really quick I'm basically gonna read the article give some of my thoughts I am not going to give like a full-blown here are all my opinions on this because I don't know what they are yet because I don't know enough about this venture, this announcement. I have a lot of questions. I have more questions than opinions at this point, we'll put it that way. But I just, I'm very excited that this is happening and I am excited about the discussion that it is already generating and I want to contribute to that. So let's get into it. This piece is called Three Publishing Veterans Form a New House, Authors' Equity. Madeline McIntosh and Don Weisberg, who have served as CEO of Penguin Random House US and Macmillan, respectively, have joined forces with Nina Von Moltke, most recently President and Director of Strategic Development at Penguin Random House US, to form a new publishing company, Authors' Equity. As its name implies, the publisher will operate outside of traditional publishing business models, offering no advances but paying authors a high percentage of a book's profits, a model used by some other types of hybrid publishers. Five of the company's investors are authors, including James Clear, Louise Penny, and Tim Ferriss. Clear's Atomic Habits has been a nonfiction bestseller for years and, according to publisher Penguin Random House, has sold more than 15 million copies. Penny has been published by St. Martin's, and her works include the best-selling Amand Gamache series, published by the Minotaur imprint. Paris is best known for his four-hour series, which is also published by Penguin Random House. According to the announcement, Clear will publish future books with Authors' Equity. While Penny said that she is committed to St. Martin's, she is invested in Authors' Equity because it is time for a new way of doing business, where the author is top of the pyramid. Ferris, too, will remain with his publisher, noting that he invested because he believes the publishing industry is ready for change. I hope the company sets new precedents in an age-old industry that's ripe for innovation, he said in a prepared statement. Okay, so right off the bat, I want to say I am kind of blown away that these former CEOs of the biggest publishing houses we have, not only are la it's launched, it's happening, but that they are so openly going against the traditional publishing model. No advances, but offering authors more profit. This is fascinating to me. It's just fascinating because it's different. Also, I had a friend, this is very hearsay, but I had a friend who said when she saw someone she knows who is in books post about this on Facebook, their reaction was, eh, this has been tried before. I can't wait to see it crash and burn. Um, I, and I'm asking this genuinely, not sarcastically or like as a gotcha, when has this been tried before by former CEOs of may, the big five, any of the big five? When has this been tried before, launched before, headed, spearheaded, and founded by people with such experience and clout in this industry? Because I, I haven't heard of it happening before. If it has and it failed, let me know. I'm curious. Macintosh, Von Moltke, and Weisberg all exited major positions at the Big Five over the past two years. Macintosh resigned from PRH last year after helping to restructure the company. Von Moltke also stepped down from her role at PRH in 2023, and Weisberg ended his tenure as Macmillan CEO at the end of 2022. Before moving to Macmillan, Weisberg also served in various executive roles at Bantam, Random House, and Penguin Random House. All three are listed as Authors' Equity co-founders, with Macintosh serving as CEO and publisher, Von Moltke as president, and Weisberg as senior advisor. Other Author Equity employees include Robin Desser, the former editor-in-chief of Random House, who left PRH herself in 2022, who has been named editorial advisor at The New Publisher. Carly Gorga, former head of partnerships and brand marketing at PRH US, who is chief marketing officer, and Andrea Buckoffin, who headed Random House's author services group before leaving for Amazon, is chief operating officer. That core group will be based in a small New York City office. 
and will be augmented, the publisher said in a statement, by a team of freelancers. Okay, I'm going to keep reading the article, but I have to interject here. I really want to see what the discussion is about this, and even though I have not been on Twitter in like a decade, I usually check in on Twitter to see what is happening, like what the chatter is when something like this is going on, but apparently with X now, if you don't have account, you just can't see pretty much anything, which, cool, continue to sink that company into the ground, great job. But I did have a friend screenshot just a little brief interaction that I thought was interesting, and a great example of the kind of discussion that I think is great that is going to be happening after this announcement. So Mary uh, Kreisman posted, uh, book workers need unions before all publishing work is given to freelancers. And she's saying that in response to this highlighted bit from an article that says, the publishing team for each book, including editors, publicists, and marketers, will be assembled from a growing pool of freelancers. Authors and their agents will help uh, decide who gets hired. Um, again, I have questions about that specifically. I think the idea of a, quote, bespoke team, I mean, that's that sounds fantastic. But I also absolutely agree with her that unions are needed. I mean, you guys have probably heard me say that in like a dozen videos before. Yeah, unions, <laughs> because they, they are continuing to outsource this work to freelancers who, side note, knowing personally many, many copy editors who freelance for the big five, myself, I can tell you that the rates they offer are crap. It's crap. It's not industry. It's not like even what the freelance editorial association says should, it's lower than that. You will get more going with private clients, which is pathetic. Like, come on houses. So agree with her there. And then this response, Mark O'Brien said, if a publisher won't pay their editors, publicists, and marketers, that publisher should not exist. You want a publishing team of people who can also afford to work on your book and also to live. As I was editing this video, I realized that because I cannot get on Twitter X and see this full discussion that is happening, I'm lacking some context and I'm looking at both what Maris and Mark are saying and wondering, particularly with Mark's statement, if there's a chance I'm misinterpreting this so i think there is a chance i'm misinterpreting so just take everything i say next with a grain of salt i stand by my opinions and i think that we are all aligned here in thinking that staff workers at these publishing houses need to be fa paid fairly and unions are vital but yeah i just I, I am lacking context in this conversation so i just wanted to call that out this is part of why i'm not going to say I'm pulling out my pom-poms and cheering this new venture because I agree with what Mark is saying here. I would feel better if we were staffing people who are like experts and educated in being editors, working on marketing, publicity, etc., and paying them livable wages. <laughs> Key. Um, I'm, but I'm also interested in this idea of if it's really going to be bespoke and every book and every author is going to need a different team of specialties, it's cool for that to be freelancers, but again, what are we paying them? What are the rates? I'm feeling a little torn on this and I would like to get more information and hear some other thoughts and perspectives that as someone who has only been an author, and I, I am an editor now for a book packager, but like I haven't worked at one of these houses and I would love to hear from people who know the ins and out of this, like people who are publicists, who are on marketing teams, who were editors at these houses. I would like to hear what they think about this in particular. So all core team members are former employees from major US publishers and Author Equity's core principles address what many see as shortcomings of big publishers. The publisher promises long-term collaboration, acknowledging that larger publishers often don't have time to help their authors develop their ideas and audience. You don't say that's because we're constantly being told to build our audience and have a brand. In contrast, Authors' Equity says it is committed to giving books room to breathe and supporting individuals and teams with the space they need to think big and think differently. We're in it from day one and for the long haul. And probably that, <laughs> I'll get to this more at the end, but that statement, I like that statement and that is probably what has me most excited because it does seem to be some acknowledgement from CEOs of these houses 
that this is an issue and they actually want to address it, which implies to me that they actually care about authors and books. I'll just go ahead and say my piece on this now. There's still a hugely cynical part of me anytime any corporation, books, any industry, doesn't matter, anytime they come out and make statements like this, I just, my instinct is not to believe it because the actions never follow. It always seems to be lip service or they're just saying what they need to say to keep as many customers and keep making as much profit as they can. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Again, I just have a lot of questions, but tentatively, I feel hopeful. <laughs> Along those lines, the publisher will offer authors flexibility and transparency and make decisions jointly in the best interests of each book. The word transparency got me. Let, uh, uh, please, I, in, I invite you, I implore you, I beg you, follow through on this. Tell us exactly how this is going to work. Because right now, this is what I want, what I would love to hear is in a practical breakdown of, okay, we are going to work with this author. He, they do not get an advance. Here is how it works. Is the author investing money in this and how much? And let's go from there. Like, walk me through the whole process. What is this going to look like? I, I, I welcome the transparency. Please bring the transparency. Simon & Schuster, where Macintosh was named to the board following its acquisition by KKR, will handle the distribution and production for some titles, the announcement said. Again, I have questions, namely, what about the other titles? Authors' Equity has agreements in place for a variety of fiction and nonfiction books and expects to announce its first titles in the coming months. So, yeah, I have more questions than opinions at this moment. <laughs> I really want to know exactly how this is going to work. The website, which I went to the website and I actually did, they have a contact us, kind of reach out if you have questions forum. Who knows how long it'll take if anyone ever does get back, but I did go ahead and fill it out and I signed up for more updates and I'm going to follow this very closely because I think this is really interesting. Like I said, I I don't want to say right now like, this is it. This is going to change everything. Sign me up. When I have a book ready, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go for this because I, I just, I don't know practically what it's going to look like in reality when it happens. Um, but right now I will say that I consider this to be positive news from traditional publishing because it, it, the very least is going to generate a ton of discussion very openly from people at the very top about the issues that the industry has. And that has to be a good thing. Every time I make a dark doom and gloom traditional publishing video, I get comments that are like, traditional publishing is dying. Traditional publishing is dead. I made a video titled traditional publishing is dead. It was kind of clickbait, kind of sarcastic. I don't think it's dead, obviously. Um, and my response to that is always, no, it's changing. It's evolving and it's doing it incredibly slowly, slower than we would like it to. It's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. There is, there is, we're not going to have like a time of death Penguin Random House closes its doors. Not any time, I, I would say not even in my lifetime unless something really wild happens. And this is like, this seems like a big change. This seems disruptive in an awesome way. I don't know. I would love to hear your thoughts. Like I said, that's, I'm excited for the discussion to come and I'm very, very intrigued and looking forward to learning more about this. If you guys come across any interesting pieces or you want to share with me or you have thoughts and opinions, I am all about it. Let's hear it in the comments below. Anyway, uh, that's that. I'm going to go inside and grab me a coffee and I will see you guys later with another video.